And now you've got a basic understanding of the charts that I look for that I consider overextended. You understand the difference between an overextended chart and a chart that has overextended, but it's pulled back a little bit, started to consolidate, tapping on the prior highs, and then becomes a new breakout stock. Despite having that big run and holding the gains, it still can go higher. And the, being able to distinguish between those two charts, which we just covered, is very big because everybody always thinks that just because the stock has ran, it has to go back down. And that's not the case. If it consolidates at a higher level, it's going higher. So this segment, I want to focus on those charts that are just going straight up, not the consolidation type that might head higher, but the ones that literally have just gone straight up. And I want to take advantage of that morning emotions. I call this a power close gap up parabolic. So let's just say the day before the range was a dollar, dollar fifty through the entire day. When the night before it closes with a bang towards the high of days, all of a sudden we're two minutes into the open. Not only did the stock gap up 70 cents, it just ripped a dollar. That move is not sustainable. And that's what I look to take advantage of. I look to take advantage of all the people that are market covering, market buying, buying because they think it's going to the moon, and taking advantage of all that morning emotion. Because a lot of people don't consider taking profits until the market gives them their first reason to. And that could be either a pullback or it starts to go red on the day, things like that. But when a stock has gone straight up and it gaps up and starts to rip and it breaks out in a manner that's much faster compared to how it was moving before, like I said, it's not sustainable. And a lot of times, sure, the stock can go higher. It can, and it probably will. But that intra-minute, that intraday, it's not sustainable. And it's going to pull back and then it's going to consolidate and then it's either going to head higher or head lower. But what I look to take advantage of is that emotion out of the gate and then where it sits right back and then it consolidates. And I want to be able to take profits from that emotional pop to the pullback, lock in at least half and then see where it goes. Sounds pretty easy. And the reason why I said it's the riskiest of the type is because you don't have a set risk. You're not basing your risk off the high a day. You're not basing your risk off a former high but rather you're anticipating it. You're anticipating it based on whole and half dollar marks. You're anticipating it on, let's just say a stock is going up from 42, 43, 44. Then it starts to break out 47. And you think is probably a magnet on that 50 break. I'm thinking it's going to probably pop through that 50 psychologically. That's what everybody's thinking. And then everybody's going to say, okay, it's over 50 now. Now what? And then it's going to sit right back under it. And that's what I look to take advantage of. But again, what if it goes to 60? Now, 95 out of 100 stocks, 99 out of 100 maybe, usually always follow the same pattern. Emotional squeeze and sits back. Occasionally, one or two may continue to go. And that's where your rules, that's where your ability to cut a loss comes into play. And that's why if you're new and you're not familiar with it and the action's flipping around all over the place, where you could run into a problem if you're unfamiliar with these types of trades. So let's take a look. This is Jazo. Jazo was a solar company. It started running with all the other solar companies that were running this year in, in mid April to early May. And they had earnings and it gapped up this day on earnings. It ran like crazy, 650, 750, 850, 950. The next day it opened over 10, hit 1150 almost, and then finally pulled back. So here's Jazzo intraday, and as you can see, it ran from six to seven, consolidated a little bit, ran through 750, up towards eight, consolidated for most of the day, and then 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., it ran from about eight to nine, about 940 or so it closed at, 950. The next morning, it gapped up over 10. So this is pre-market, as you can see, May 21st. And this is about 7, 8 a.m. And it's already over $10 a share. Then within about 15 minutes, it's over 10, 50 and 11. This is parabolic relative to the prior price action. You can see all day it took to get up a dollar and then another dollar 50. This right here took about 15 minutes. So this action right here, nine out of 10 times is not sustainable. And that's what I look to take advantage of. 
what I base my risk off of is the whole and half dollar marks. I let it speed up and then I let it test each one. See how it reacts. 10, 10, 50, 11, 11, 50. 11, 50 was the only point that it tested and pulled back and retested and pulled back again. So I started into the parabolic. Then I started to fade, pull back a dollar. And that pullback was fast relative to how it was trading the prior day. So I took part of the profit. Then, this is 9.30, this is right at open. You can see all the volume that spikes up. It's at 10.50 pre-market, 10.60. Rips up, 11.30. This action is faster than the prior price action. And not only that, now you have a set risk. And this is kind of getting into a little bit of what I'm gonna go over later, but now, you can risk into a pop with a set risk towards the prior highs around 1150. But this action is parabolic. I look to take advantage of this and many times it's met with the same reaction to the downside as it had to the upside. Then it can consolidate and it may head back higher or it may head back lower. But most of the time it breaks out, pulls back and consolidates where it started to break out from. 